Hi everyone, welcome to or back to my channel. I'm Sally and this is my channel Secret Life of a Seamstress where I love to talk all about sewing and making clothes and other crafts sometimes as well. Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you're all doing really well. Today's video is going to be a makes video. I'm just going to be sharing with you a few things that I've been sewing and making recently. I've had quite a lot of lovely sewing and crafting time over the Easter holidays and over the Easter break. I've made a really good start on some of my spring and summer makes, some of the things that I shared that I wanted to make with you. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to catching up and sharing them all with you today. So let's get straight into it, shall we? And first of all, I'll share with you what I'm wearing today. So today I'm wearing a brand new Coco Top by Tilly and the Buttons. This is actually something that's hot off of the sewing machine because I literally only finished it yesterday. <laughs> I'd finished all my work yesterday and I had a couple of hours in the afternoon and I thought I'm just going to get on with that Coco Top because this is one of the things that I know realistically I can get it sewn up in about an hour or an hour and a half and sometimes those sort of quick projects are the ones that I put off the most. So yeah, yesterday afternoon I treated myself to a lovely couple of hours sewing and I have a new top to show for it. So this is the Coco Top by Tilly and the Buttons. It's a real oldie but a goodie, I think. I have had this pattern for absolutely years. It was one of the first patterns that I sewed when I got into sewing with jersey and sewing with knit fabrics. It really is a great pattern and it's just so quick and easy to sew. So I'll pop in the line drawings if I can so that you can see the sort of outline of the top. So this can be made as a top or a dress. It's a really simple jersey top or dress. It has a simple boat or slash neck, but you can actually make it with a cow neck as well if you prefer. The top has a slightly sort of A-line shape, so it does go in and flare out over your hips and the dress is really quite a line. I have made the dress in the past. I don't think it's necessarily for me. <laughs> I don't think that real sort of A line shape particularly suits me, but the top is just perfect and I absolutely love it. So, yeah, you can make the top with three quarter length sleeves or you can make full length sleeves, or of course, you can crop them to short sleeves if you prefer as well. And the pattern does include a cute little patch pocket that you can add if you want to. So, yeah, I shared that as part of my sort of capsule wardrobe journey. I really wanted to add a couple more Breton stripy tops to my wardrobe. I find them so useful for spring and summertime, especially when you have this sort of three quarter length sleeve. It's great for those sort of in between months where it's not that warm yet, but you don't really want to be wearing a jumper either. I definitely reach for stripy tops like this all the time. And I had a couple of Bowden tops, which I'd worn to death and got rid of last year. So I really wanted to replace those. So this is the first one in my new stripy top collection. This one is sewn from a really lovely great quality fabric from Fabric Godmother. This is a French terry. So I think they do this in a few different colors, but I went for this mustard stripe because I wanted to steer myself away from my usual navy. I have so many navy stripy tops and jumpers. I really needed to venture out and try a new color. And I love mustard. I'm not always sure that the sort of yellowy mustard suits me, but I really liked this mustard because it's almost a sort of a browny kind of mustard. And I love a good brown or a good beige, so I thought this one would be a good one. So yeah, yesterday I whipped this top up. It took me an hour and a half from cutting to finish and I just thoroughly enjoyed it. So yeah, since this is made from a French terry, it does give it quite a boxy feel to it. The pattern does advise you to use like a stable knit jersey without too much stretch to it. So this is the type of fabric that the pattern does recommend. It's supposed to be made in like a solid jersey, something that's not going to stretch or drape too much. I have actually made this cocoa top in a drapey viscose jersey and I found it worked really well. But for this version, I just wanted something a little bit more structured and something with a little bit more weight to it because as I say, it will just keep me a little bit warmer in the colder months. So yeah, I'm thoroughly pleased with this top. It turned out just as I had imagined it. It will go really well with jeans and shorts and probably even skirts and floaty trousers and things in the spring and summertime, I think. It's just gonna be a really good wardrobe staple. If you are a beginner and you're looking for your first knit pattern, I would highly recommend this Coco Top. The good thing about this, I think, is if you're a little bit nervous, it doesn't have a neck band in it. So one of the scariest things about sewing a jersey top, I think anyway, can be fitting in like a t-shirt neckband because 
quite a lot of stretching and stretching out that can happen when you're doing that. But this one, you literally just turn under the neckline here and then you stitch it with a zigzag or a twin needle, which is what I've done. So yeah, if you're a beginner and you want a really quick and easy um, first jersey pattern, I would highly recommend this. And it's great because it's sewn in a stable knit fabric as well, which means that there's not a lot of stretching out that can happen. So anyway, that's my new cocoa top. So moving on to the second of my makes I have to share with you today and probably the most meaty of all these projects, I finally made my first pair of jeans and I'm so excited to share them with you because this was such a big thing for me. I think like so in my blazer, I knew I really wanted to do it and I wanted to get it done but it seemed such a big task even to just sort of trace off the pattern and get all the pieces cut out. But over the Easter holidays, I had a little bit more time and um, I sort of slowly made my way through the process. <laughs> One day I just um, had a fit of like wanting to get something done and I spent quite a long time actually, I think it took a good couple of hours to trace off the pattern and get all the pieces cut out and everything. Um, so yeah, anyway, <laughs> I should mention the pattern that I've been sewing. So I had looked at lots of different jeans patterns and the pattern that I ended up settling on that I wanted to make was this one, which is the Megan Nielsen Dawn jeans. I'd heard really good things about this pattern. Lots of people absolutely love it. So the fit is great and everything. But for me, what's kind of sold it was this lovely wide leg pair of jeans on the front of the pattern image, because these I think are really quite me and they're quite on trend at the moment as well. I love wide leg trousers at the moment and I thought these would just be a really good sort of staple wardrobe piece again that I could bring out in the spring and summertime. I love the cropped length and I just thought, yeah, I just really love the style basically. I also love Megan Nielsen patterns and I do find that mostly, so far, <laughs> they tend to fit me quite well just straight off of the pattern. I don't tend to make a lot of alterations to her patterns. So yeah, I thought it might be a good jeans pattern to start with. With this pattern as well, I love that you get lots of different views that you can make. So even though patterns are quite expensive, you are getting quite a lot for your money. So you can actually make view A, which is a tapered leg jean, or you can make straight legs, or you can make the wide leg version, which I love, or you can even make a denim pair of shorts. So I feel as though this is gonna be a real like workhorse pattern that's got loads of different variations to it. I can make the shorts in the summer as well if I want to. So here they are, my first ever pair of jeans. So I'll pop in a few photos as well. So obviously you can see these on. I didn't wanna wear them in today's video because obviously it's good to kind of talk through and show you some of the details. I am so, so pleased with how these have turned out. So in the end, I went for a straight size four from the pattern. So the pattern goes from a zero up to a size 20. So the waist of a size zero is 24 and the waist of a size 20 is 38. And then the hip measurements are 34 for a zero, 48 for a size 20. So I went for the size four, which was a waist 26 and a hip 36, which are exactly my waist and hip measurements. So I was really, really lucky with that. And I checked the finished garment measurements as well. And there's not a lot of ease in um, the pattern. So the finished garment measurements actually come out as a 27 and a half inch waist and a 36 and five eighths of an inch hip. So there's not a lot of ease in there. So I was kind of happy with all of those measurements. I didn't actually make a twirl as such. I've had some denim in my stash for absolutely ages. I hate making twirls <laughs> with a passion. It just seems like a bit of a waste of time to me in a way. I know it's not, but sometimes it just feels like it is, if you know what I mean. Um, so I decided to just go for it, use the denim that I already have, go for a straight size four, and if there was anything to tweak along the way, I was hoping that I'd just be able to kind of sort it out as I went. So as it turned out, I was so, so lucky with the fit of these. I feel as though they fit really nicely. They fit well on my waist, which is always good. I hate anything feeling too tight around my waist. And they also fit really nicely around my hips and my bottom area. The only thing I changed slightly about the size was um, before I fitted the waistband of the jeans, I actually tried the jeans on once the zip and everything was in. And I felt as though the jeans could have been sort of very fitted around my waist. And I know that I'm gonna want to wear these primarily with things tucked in. So I wanted to have a little bit of extra sort of ease around the waistband area. So rather than taking the 
1.5 centimeter or 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance at the waist, I just graded it to be one centimeter and then graded in again for it to be 1.5 centimeters from the hips onwards, if that makes sense. So I just got a about a centimeter extra around the waist, I guess, just to be able to tuck things in comfortably. So I just want to talk about the therapy of making these jeans because I shared a little bit about how I've been struggling recently with anxiety and a bit of insomnia and all of those things. Well, it kind of came to a bit of a head just before the Easter holidays and I really wasn't feeling myself at all. I just felt as though, I suppose, I don't want to use the word depressed, but I was feeling quite down with it all and I felt as though I didn't want to sew, I didn't really want to do any of the things that normally bring me so much joy even like walking or knitting or making or anything like that. I just wasn't feeling myself at all. And I thought, I'm going to give myself the Easter holidays to just have a break. I didn't really post on Instagram or anything. Did keep up with the work commitments that I did have. Um, but, you know, just did the bare minimum and then just tried to take some time, basically. And um, there was an afternoon of the Easter holidays where my daughter was out, she was staying over at my mum's with her cousin, my son was occupied, I really just had the whole afternoon to myself and even though I didn't feel like it at all, I made myself start these jeans and I thought I'm just going to do half an hour, I'm going to make myself do half an hour, see if I can sort of rekindle my love for sewing again and um yeah, see where it goes from there. And I ended up sewing for eight hours straight that day. <laughs> I think I started just after lunch and then I carried on like right through the evening. And it was so enjoyable and so therapeutic. I didn't photograph anything. I didn't film anything. I didn't sort of, you know, take any record of what I was doing. I was just doing it for myself. And I can't tell you well you'll know you'll know you'll know <laughs> if you know you know but the way that sewing makes you feel because this was new to me I was thinking about each step and I was really concentrating and I was really trying to do my best and make these as neat as I possibly could and the process of doing that was just so therapeutic it was the best afternoon I'd had in a long while and it just really calmed my mind and I just found it so helpful and yeah, it was a real sort of reminder to me of these crafts and how good they are for your mental health. And I think for me, obviously, I find myself now being like a sewing and knitting content creator, which really is my absolute dream job. I love it so much and I would never want anyone to think that I'm being ungrateful for the work that I have. Because my hobby is essentially now my work, it's really hard sometimes to sort of take a break from that work because I love it all so much and my natural instinct now is to film and photograph everything I'm doing and document it all and share it with you and with Instagram and you know sometimes it becomes too much and I think sometimes you just need to take a break and do the thing just for you and remind yourself why you love it. So yeah, making these jeans really was just like therapy for me. I enjoyed all of the top stitching. I enjoyed going through the process of sewing the zipper fly and all of those things. It was just lovely. <laughs> so I thought I would just share that with you again. I know if you are a crafter as well, you probably already know about the benefits to mental health that crafting can bring. But for me, it was just a really, really good reminder. And I was so pleased and grateful to have that afternoon. And it really did remind me again of why I love sewing. That was a big load of waffle. <laughs> I know that my natural instinct is going to be that when I come to edit this video, I'm probably going to want to edit all of that out, but I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it in because I think it's important to share. Anyway, back to the actual jeans. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, I really am thrilled with these. So just to say that I did change the fly of these to have a zipper fly in them. So the pattern actually suggests that you make a button fly because these do have a vintage or a nod to vintage, so like a vintage style. And apparently with vintage styles, it's um, normal to have a button fly for jeans. But I really don't like button flies in jeans. I find them quite annoying. So I wanted to change the fly to have a zipper. And they actually have a full tutorial on how to do that on the Megan Nielsen website. So I followed that tutorial and the zip went in so nicely. And again, I just found it a lovely therapeutic process. So I'll just open my zip so that you can see it. 
So that's the zipper fly inside. <laughs> I'm really pleased with how this turned out. I don't think the zip could have gone in any better. And you know me, I don't really enjoy sewing zips in any form. Um, but yeah, I'm super pleased with how that went in. And then with these, you've just got the two pockets. And then if I can give you a little close up, there's just a little coin pocket here, which was really satisfying to do as well. I guess you could leave that out if you didn't want that detail. And then the back has this lovely yoke detail here. And then you've got the back patch pockets too. And everything is just double top stitched. So you'll notice that I haven't gone for a contrasting top stitch color this time. I've actually just matched the thread to the denim and I have done the double top stitching, but it's not as visible obviously as if I'd done it in a yellow or something like that. For this time, I thought I just wanted to not worry too much about how my top stitching looked. I just wanted to do the jeans and see how they went. I think next time I will try maybe a contrasting colour. On that note, let me know about top stitching thread. So I've never actually done any top stitching with like a proper top stitching thread. I did buy some for these jeans, but I found that when I came to thread it through my machine, I couldn't get the thread through the needle. I was using a denim needle and I thought that would be enough, but is there a proper top stitching needle that you're supposed to use when you do top stitching? Let me know because yeah, I just found the thread too thick to go through my needle. So I ended up just actually top stitching with the thread that I was using for the rest of the jeans. So yeah, as I say, you can see it if you look really closely, but otherwise, you know, it's not that visible. So I'm gonna let you know about a couple of things that I'm not happy with with these jeans. They are really picky things, but I always want to let you know about how I feel about my imperfections as well as everything that's gone right. So the only thing that I'm slightly unhappy with with these is that when the waistband came together, it's just slightly sort of out of line at the top. <laughs> Can you see that? And I know that's a really, really picky little thing, but it did annoy me slightly because the rest of the jeans had turned out so neatly. And the other thing that happened was that my machine really struggled with the buttonhole. So I ended up having to unpick one of the buttonholes and do it again. So I feel as though that hasn't gone quite as neatly as it could have done either, but you know, they're just little things. And otherwise I'm absolutely thrilled with these. I really enjoyed the process of sewing jeans. I'm waffling now. I can feel that I'm waffling. But anyway, <laughs> I'm just gonna carry on and round up. So I really enjoyed sewing these jeans. I can't wait to make another pair. I want to make a cream pair actually, because I think cream will be another good one that will go with lots of summer things. I love the cropped length of these. The length is actually perfect in the end. They're kind of ankle length, so they're not super cropped, but they are just cropped enough for springtime, I think. So yeah, super happy with these. I'll take a breath now. <laughs> but yeah, those are my jeans. Last in sewing makes, the other thing I made over Easter was my white Marnie blouse. So this is something that I wanted to make for spring and summertime. I've made a Marnie before and I absolutely loved it. I love making it in a solid fabric rather than anything sort of flowery or too patterned because I think it shows off the details really well. So my last Marnie was made from like a, I think it was called a shade putty actually. It's like a browny, pinky, beigey sort of color. And I thought a white one would work really well in my wardrobe. So yeah, again, this was a lovely, really therapeutic sew. I love doing these little pin tucks here. I find them so therapeutic and so satisfying. And they really were nice to make. This is sewn from exactly the same fabric as I made my first version from. It's a Minerva exclusive viscose um, and they do it in so many different colors and I just find it lovely quality. I've used this viscose a few times now and yeah it's just so nice. It's got a lovely sort of silky feel to it and it's really drapey and really nice to work with. It does have a bit of weight to it as well so I find it really nice for sort of blouses and tops and things like that. So yeah, this is exactly the same as my first version, but I did make a couple of changes. So just a very quick overview of the Marnie pattern, if you haven't seen it already. This is the Marnie dress and blouse by Tilly and the Buttons. It's like a smock style dress and blouse. It has the lovely pin tuck detail at the front that you can include or you can leave out if you want to. There are other details that you can include like a ruffle neck or ruffles to the shoulders and you can have it as a blouse or a dress. Something that I changed with the making process of this this time is, I don't know if you've seen the Marnie, let me know if you found this as well. 
The neckline around here and then around the back of the keyhole is actually finished with a piece of bias binding and the pattern includes a pattern piece for that piece of bias binding. I find the pattern piece of binding so narrow <laughs> and when I came to sew my neckline piece last time it was such a fiddle to get it in neatly because it was so narrow so you kind of you bias bind the neckline in the way that you would normally bias bind anything so you'd have your folds in the fabric and then you would sew along the fold turn it under and turn the fold of the fabric under if that makes sense yeah and I found that such a fiddle to do last time because the pattern piece was so thin so this time I actually doubled the width of the bias binding piece and instead of bias binding the neckline in the way the pattern told you to I actually just used the bias binding as one piece and then flipped it over if that makes sense and I find that the finish that way has turned out so much neater for me than my other version. So what you're supposed to do is actually create this button loop here from another piece of bias binding and that is all supposed to be sewn into the bias binding neckline. But yeah, very very fiddly to do. <laughs> this time I've just bias bound the neckline and then as a sneaky little hack I actually stole one of my daughter's plastic hairbands. If you've got a little girl you might know that they have these really tiny little plastic hairbands. She's got loads of them in a pile upstairs. I stole a clear one of those and I've just sewn it into the binding here. So can you see that that's just an elastic piece of hair bubble? <laughs> so for now, I'm gonna see how that works rather than fiddling around with another piece of um, bias binding to try and get that loop right. I'm just using that piece of elastic. I'm gonna see how that goes. It might not have a lot of um, life in it, it might end up coming loose. But if it does, I'm just going to hand sew a button loop um, and do it that way. But yeah, I thought I would share that sneaky little hack if like me you found sewing the neckline binding really fiddly. This time as well, I've just left all of the length in the top. So with my other Marnie, I ended up cutting quite a lot off of the length and I really regretted it. And I found that with my first Marnie, I've always really worn it tucked in and I think I'll probably wear this tucked in mostly too. So I just left the length as it was. I haven't taken any off because I was too fearful of cutting too much off again and having it untuck itself when it was worn tucked in. So annoying when tops do that, isn't it? So yeah, I learned my lesson this time and I've just kept all of the length. So yeah, there's probably not much more to say about this one. You've probably heard me talk about the Marnie so much in the past that you probably don't need me to go on about it again, but I absolutely love it. And I do think it's funny how this has turned out to be one of my most favorite blouse patterns because as I've shared before, I really wasn't fussed about this design when I first saw it come out at all. But now I can just imagine it in so many different ways. I think for summertime, I think I would really like to try a sleeveless version of this and just use the frill pattern piece as like a cute little frill sleeve. I've done that before with a Davenport dress and top. And I think frill sleeves just work really nicely. So that would be a lovely summer top to try. And I think that would look really nice in like a linen or something. So hopefully I'll get around to trying it sleeveless in the summer at some point. But yeah, I highly recommend this Marnie pattern. It's just lovely. It's lovely so There is quite a lot of gathering in it, which isn't always my favorite thing to do, but you just need to get over that, I think, <laughs> and get on with it because the result is so pretty. So that's my finished Marnie. And then finally, I just have this little um, crochet project to share with you. I finally finished this Highland cow for my daughter and I did actually get it done in time for her birthday. So I'm so pleased about that. So again, this was just another sort of therapeutic Easter holiday make. Um, I had to think about it quite a lot because I find that when I'm crocheting these kind of arigurami toys, I have to concentrate. I can't do it while I'm watching TV or anything very well. Um, but yeah, it was a really nice thing to do. Some of the parts of it are really quite fiddly <laughs> and I did find them quite difficult. So like the little horns here. They're really, really fiddly to crochet and stuff and so on. And so I did find the sewing up a little bit sort of tedious and a little bit difficult, but yeah, it's come together so well and I'm really pleased with the results. And my daughter was happy with him as well. So yeah, super pleased. I'd highly recommend this pattern. I just found it on Love Crafts and I just came across it. She loves Highland cows and I thought it would be a cute little gift for her. One thing I did change about the pattern is that the pattern suggests that you crochet black eyes and then sew them on, but I thought that would be an absolute faff to do. So instead I've just added some safety eyes. 
here and that was much much easier. I did have to kind of guess where the eyes were going to go because obviously with safety eyes you have to put the eyes in before you finish off your circle and um, the hair and the horns and everything else wasn't done at that point but I think it's worked out okay. Look at the little tail as well. <laughs> so many cute little details. I think he's actually turned out a bit bigger than what the pattern suggests because he's a toy. I ended up, because I had some double knitting wool in my stash, that's what I ended up using rather than the wool that the pattern suggests. And I used a bigger needle as well to accommodate for my thicker wool. So it has turned out a little bit bigger than I think it's supposed to be, but obviously it doesn't really matter, does it, if it's a toy. So I thought I would just share him and just say that I'm really pleased to have him finished. So that's it, that's everything I have to share with you in terms of make so far. I think you're all caught up with everything I've been sewing and making recently. Next week I'm gonna have a styling video. So I'm gonna be putting together some spring and summer outfits using my handmade and ready to wear items from my wardrobe. I think it's something I really need to do because I don't know about you, but I'm just getting up in the morning at the moment and really not knowing what to wear. It's this sort of interchangeable weather where one minute it's really lovely and warm and sunny and the next minute it's cold and rainy. So I'm gonna get some things out and put together some outfits and share them with you. That's why I haven't included any styling in this video this time because I thought I would save it all till next week. So I'm gonna be sharing with you how I'm gonna be styling these new pieces that I've been sharing with you today. So if you haven't already subscribed, I would love you to consider subscribing and click the notification bell so that you don't miss out on that video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching everyone. Take care and I look forward to seeing you in another video soon. Bye.